What's up guys, Frankie Dingleberry here. So I finally upgraded my CPU again, and this time I got an R5-1600, which is a 6-core, 12-thread monster CPU on the budget end from AMD. It has a 3.2GHz base clock with a 3.4 multi-core boost clock and a 3.6GHz single-core boost clock. And this CPU comes to $219 in the States and $299 here in Canada. And the CPU is causing quite the controversy right now in the uh, PC community because it gives a gaming performance of a 7600K i5 and it gives content creation performance of an i7-7700K and it comes in less than that i5 which is insane value. And so as you guys know I already had myself an FX6300 which is a 6 core CPU from AMD from 2012 and today I decided to make a video comparing the 6 core from 5 years ago versus the 6 core versus today. The difference is actually uh, quite huge. Even when it comes to games that do not benefit from a stronger CPU, ones that rely solely on the GPU, you do get a much stronger minimum and much better frame times. Like, I can't even explain the difference in smoothness of those frame times compared to the FX6300. See, before on the FX6300, even if I did have 70 or 80 FPS going on a game, it just it doesn't feel smooth. The time between the frames are so inconsistent that it kind of gives this really micro stuttery feel that's not quite enjoyable to play. But now, with my R5 CPU, it feels like I'm playing with V-Sync when I'm not, which is pretty insane. I didn't actually think that that's how smooth it was supposed to be. When it comes to IPC, which is instructions per clock, it falls in between about Haswell and Skylake, but it also does benefit from DDR4, which is huge when it comes to games nowadays. But when you're talking 4 cores and 4 threads versus 6 cores and 12 threads, the difference is phenomenal, and the value of this CPU is just insane. So if you're watching this video right now and you have yourself an FX CPU from AMD or even a Haswell or Sandy Bridge i5 and you're kind of wondering if you should upgrade, then this CPU is a definite good upgrade for you and I do recommend it. Now you could wait for Canon Lake or Coffee Lake, can't remember what it is, but the next version of CPUs that we're going to see from Intel, you could wait and they are apparently going to be offering more cores and threads in comparison due to the Ryzen CPUs offering so much multi-core value, but the choice is really yours and it just comes down to personal preference if you want AMD right now or if you want to wait for Intel. Either way, I think you'll be happy, but for right now, the R5-1600 is an insanely good value CPU and I do recommend the upgrade. So if you want to know my specs, check the description down below, but basically we're going to be testing using an RX 480 8GB, which is a Gaming X version from MSI, 16GB um, of DDR4, which is Corsair Vengeance LPX, clocked at 2400MHz, and of course the R5-1600, which is only going to be operating at stock frequencies. I haven't overclocked yet, and I don't feel confident until I get a better cooling solution, but when the time comes that I do upgrade, I will do an overclocked versus stock clock video on this CPU and feel free to stick around after the benchmarks and we'll talk a little bit about the results that we got. So without further ado, let's jump right into the benchmarks.
So there you have it, those are the benchmarks for both productivity and for gaming. Unfortunately, I don't have the games that benefit more from stronger CPUs such as GTA, City Skylines, or uh, Ashes of the Singularity, but you might have noticed that I managed to pick up Metro Last Light Redux. Luckily I found it on G2A or GMG I think it was for only $5, which was the first one and second one together, so I'm really happy about that. And I use Fire Strike to benchmark because I need to pay like $11 to get the Time Spy upgrade. It is free, but I think you have to like sit through the really long demo each time you run it so I will get that eventually so expect to see times by benchmarks in the future but yeah as you can see with the physics score and fire strike um, Cinebench and handbrake video compression the difference is pretty big it's a little bit more than double when it comes to raw CPU horsepower which makes sense because it does have double the amount of threads and keep in mind that the FX 6300 is running at 4.3 gigahertz so it almost has an entire gigahertz clock speed advantage so if I manage to overclock um, my R5 up to like 4 gigahertz or something like that the difference will just grow even more which is pretty insane but as you can see that in the games there isn't a huge advantage when it comes to raw fps but there is always a gain in the minimum and average which is pretty good but the big difference is those frame times which i can't express enough how important it is to have that butter smooth gameplay but with tomb raider the difference is pretty huge actually and i'm pretty sure that's mainly because of the hair because the hair takes a lot of physics power because i guess the cpu has to calculate where each strand of hair is going to be and all the gpu really does is it renders a texture for that hair oh and one thing i forgot to touch on is the streaming um, I'm actually able to stream 1080p 60 just using my CPU for Black Ops 3 and the quality looks really good at a bitrate of 5500 um, but on the FX6300 I wasn't even able to get away with 720p 60 which is pretty insane. So yeah, the conclusion would be that I definitely recommend the CPU to anybody looking to upgrade from an old i5 or an FX CPU from AMD. You get insane value for your money, and if you want really good smooth gameplay and like ridiculous multi-threaded performance, then yeah, I recommend a CPU. But I guess that wraps this video up, so leave me a like and um, subscribe if you want more PC-related content. And uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this CPU, and feel free to ask me any questions because I'm here to answer. So yeah, until next time, peace trout YouTube.